Okay, so I'm Brian Cardell, and I am a developer advocate at Egalia, and I'm here with uh, my colleague, Eric Meyer, also a developer advocate at Egalia. Hey. And we are going to uh, do something a little different today. We're going to have a chat about some new thing that we're doing. Yeah, so the Math ML Core Collective. Um, this is a, I mean, it's a basically a new project, but... Um, I think I think a lot of people um, aren't really sure what the what the situation is. Um, like, what is a what is a collective in this context, and what's the Math ML Core Collective about? So, let's start with what is a collective. So, on our podcast on episode five, Web Ecosystem Health, we had Pia Mancini as one of the guests. She is from Open Collective. Open Collective is a uh, a platform for connecting communities uh, that need to deal with all kinds of things around accounting and funding for work like open source projects. So over 2,500 open source projects are able to collect funds from many, many, many sources and keep open books about those and things and just makes it very, very easy for us to collectively pull money toward a common cause. Cool. Um, and so, well, well, there's a, there's a new collective, but this isn't our first collective, right? That's how Focus Visible came to WebKit, was it? Yeah. So in fact, we had this idea some time ago that came from this observation that, hey, you know what are open source projects? Browsers. <laughs> and we at Egalia, we work on them pretty much all day, every day. Uh, and a lot of the funding from that comes from individual organizations. For example, Bloomberg Tech funded the implementations in WebKit and Blank for CSS Grid. That's how we got those. Uh, so that is really, really interesting, and it right. allows us to have a conversation about how all of this works and why those things are blocked. They're blocked because there are finite resources, but the clients for the web and the use cases are pretty much everything and everyone. So we have this very, very long backlog now, and uh, no matter how big the team is, it's not big enough, and they have to prioritize things through their own specific lens. So uh, we had this observation that uh, it's great that we have two means so that browsers themselves can fund things or individual organizations can fund things. But why should those be the only ways that we have to do something? If something is important to two companies, why couldn't two companies pull their money together and get something done? Or if it's important to four companies or more realistically, it's important to 10 or 20 companies. And in fact, why is there any arbitrary limit we're placing on this at all? What if a million web developers all decided that something was really, really important and was worth funding? Why shouldn't we be able to get that done? Why couldn't our client be able to be as many people as it takes to get a thing done? So with that, we created this open prioritization idea, which is uh, sort of a super collective. You can think about it as it's many projects in, in theory, it would be. Uh, our first experiment with this, where we put forward six possible ideas of things that were just lacking implementation priority. But we asked the community to begin this conversation and to think about how we could fund these things, to ask companies and organizations and even individuals, if they were so interested, to go out and advocate for these things and get them funding. And then we'll do the one that gets the most interest. We did uh, focus visible in WebKit was the chosen thing, and it is implemented today uh, in Safari Technology Preview behind a flag. It turns out that this is actually an interesting one if we want to talk about some of the things that make this difficult. Occasionally, as we get the last implementation, we learn something new, and it requires some further conversation. Mac UX and expectations have some interesting aspects to them that are slightly different for which there were not good answers yet. So we're, I think we're getting pretty close to sorting all those things out. And we know that everybody is interested in getting this ship this year. So we'll get there. And I think that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and so now we're doing another collective. And what, when I, when we say we, I guess we should probably be clear. I mean, Egal these collectives, these specific collectives we're talking about are things that Egalia is sort of spearheading open collective is a much bigger platform. That's not like Egalia's or anything. Um, so, uh, we've got math ML core. So what, I mean, what is, what is math ML core? I'm, I'm familiar with math ML or at least semi-familiar, but 
Mathemel Core is is kind of new. Mathemel Core is kind of new, and at the same time, it's not. Um, so the Mathemel uh, specification was among the first specifications that was taken up by W3C all the way back in the 90s. Yeah, in, in the previous millennium. <laughs> right. A thousand years ago, roughly. Yeah. Uh, specs back in those days were a lot more aspirational. They were more vague. We didn't have web platform tests. Things weren't thought through and tied together, really. And so uh, as a result, there's lots and lots in the MathML specification that is implemented by no browser. Uh, and there's lots, in fact, that will that aren't even implemented by any MathML tools that aren't web browsers. There's lots in there that is aspirational. It's a really, really huge spec. And again, it's vague in too many places. So even existing MathML implementations don't match. They don't agree on how CSS plays with things or what the DOM should look like in terms of the API surface and things like that. So MathML Core is uh, an effort to resolve those things and put MathML in a firm place in the platform. A lot of this work was done over the last few years by SVG as well. There isn't a SVG core specification, but that work just carried on in SVG. Uh, since MathML has never landed its final implementation, we decided to break this out and call it MathML core. This is the stuff that is targeted primarily at the browsers. Yeah, so there's this MathML core specification, which is sort of the, all right, let's let's take a, a, a core set of things and very specifically define how they should be implemented. So this MathML has, you know, exactly how to, like the exact steps to put the numerator over the denominator. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily say, you know, this is the exact pixel rendering you should have, but it very like clearly says, you know, this you put these two things together and this is how they should be related in a CSS model way or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, here's, the, here's um, what should go into the accessibility tree. So... There's a specification, and that's great, but <laughs> specifications, you know, are are theoretical constructs in a way. Um, Some of those changes have already been applied to existing implementations, and uh, Chromium we have been working on for quite a while. A implementation upstream in Chromium. It began as a prototype where we were trying to figure out what could work for MathML core. We did a prototype in Chromium, and then in the process, we were able to have deep conversations with engineers at Google and the CSS Working Group and get that work started. And now that work is upstreaming. And so uh, as far as MathML core implementations, the most complete one is currently Chromium. Uh, so we have a lot of work to align other browsers and make sure that they have agreement on those answers. So that, that's, that's a lot of work that needs to be done. And historically, the challenge is that uh, prioritization. Like, um, when does it get done? <laughs> I mean, browser teams have resource constraints. Yeah. Right. Which doesn't always seem like it, but there's engineer time, number of engineers, uh, you know, what those engineers are good at, since not all engineers are equally expert, right? An accessibility engineer isn't necessarily the same as a layout engineer. So, you know, you only have so many engineers, they only have so much time. The The backlog is long. Very long. <laughs> and so if we want MathML core to be supported in browsers, there's kind of a choice. You can advocate for that to happen, you know, advocate to browser teams and hope that it gets high enough on their priority list that eventually some engineer time is devoted to it, to this. Or with these open collective, like the community can put together a, a pool of money and hire somebody. I mean, Agalia has done that kind of work in the past, but we're not the only people who could do that sort of thing. You know, hire somebody to implement MathML core in Chromium. Exactly. And two individuals, individuals, regular people, <laughs> contributed a rather large sum of money to help spin this up. Yeah. They have been involved with MathML for a really, really long time, and they're keenly aware of these resource constraints and the problems of implementing it. And they were very interested in maybe starting this up as an idea where maybe rather than wait for browser teams to get this on the priority list, and maybe rather than relying on the, the passions of really dedicated open source volunteers 
going above and beyond their day jobs. <laughs> Maybe we could yeah. create a pool of money and people could say, this is what I would like to work on. And for the board to say that is a good thing for you to work on. <laughs> and then for people to be able to submit their work mm -hmm. and receive pay. And it's <laughs> it sounds outlandish, but we've already done it once, right? Like with Focus Visible. It, it sounds happened. outlandish at first, um, but it sounds outlandish only because we're used to the current norm. Uh, so when you look at what Egalia does, yeah. uh, we do this all day, every day. <laughs> Uh, for companies, yeah. for all kinds of reasons, uh, sponsor some kind of work upstream. We're just making the observation that uh, if we can do the work for one company, why couldn't a group of companies get together? Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it's possible that individual contributors can give money, even large amounts of money, if you chose to do that. But that's not actually what we're appealing to here, for, for the most part. So you're... You're uh, yeah. announcing this. I don't know when we'll release, if we release this on the same day, but you're, you're announcing this at W3C TPAC meeting. And those are kind of some yeah. of the primary people we think should be interested in this, you know, providing sponsorship. Yeah, I, you know, the, the various companies who are members of the W3C, some of whom are, of course, like Google and Apple and Microsoft, sure. but there's actually quite a few more there's there's 500 member yeah companies. that's yeah so you know if uh i'm just gonna pick an example out of the air if a bunch of media companies you know want wanted a, a particular uh news sharing api i'm 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 totally making things up but the the idea is there you know and there there was some sort of specification for that but it wasn't a priority for the people who actually you know the companies that that make browsers those companies could get together and pool you know whatever that seems like it would take let's just say a hundred thousand dollars you know just picking a random number but they could you know 10 companies could get together and each kick in ten thousand dollars and there's a hundred thousand dollars to hire somebody full-time for a year to make this thing happen in browsers uh, I would suggest that um, if you, the more we extend this out further, the less everyone has to give and we reach large numbers. Right. And I would suggest that there's something useful to recognize that uh, the companies that do it today, it's not an act of sheer generosity, right? They are mm -hmm. getting largely funded through things like the default search deal, uh, which rakes in a lot of money, like really a lot of money. Yeah. And it is made pennies yeah. at a time, right? So the bigger we cast mm -hmm. the net, uh, the less any one company has to pay. But of course, there are bigger companies should pay more, right? And I think that there is actually a really practical example of this that we also help champion, which you uh, are on the steering committee for, Eric. Yeah, the Open Web Docs. Yeah, that is also a collective that is part of Open Collective. And it funds the documentation of the web and it is a way that we can work together to fund and prioritize that and there are individuals who choose to give five dollars a month or ten dollars one time or whatever mm -hmm. but really the vast majority of the funding comes from multiple organizations uh right. google throws in and microsoft throws in and facebook throws in and uh you know, Coil throws in, Agalia throws in, mm -hmm. and together we make a rather large pool of money, which we can figure out how to collectively use toward what we all can agree we need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, we, <laughs> we, we just did a write the docs thing for open web docs and uh, open web docs has, is it four full-time Maybe it's five full-time members now. Mm -hmm. I think it's five um, full-time employees um, who the you know the various companies like that you mentioned who who have been throwing in to fund the Open Web Docs Collective. That's where those those employees' salaries come from is from that from that pool of money. And so you know, I suppose it's possible that MathML Core could could grow to that point. MathML core uh, is approaching level one. We're trying to reach level one conformance. But then after MathML core level one, 
mm-hmm. there will be a level two <laughs> yeah. and so on. Uh, and work needs to continue. And not only does work need to continue, but once you have an implementation, uh, you need to maintain the implementation. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when new CSS features come along and they need to have things that are updated in MathML, when new things are defined in Unicode and something needs to be reflected in MathML implementations or uh, new font things come along that need to have an impact on MathML, mm-hmm. uh, no, none of these things are ever done, right? Yeah. Uh, web standards are uh, constantly, constantly, constantly uh, being updated. Yep. Uh, the idea for the MathML support is that we could take an area of interest that is very specifically seems uninteresting for a single vendor to champion and pay for on their own historically. Mm. And we can look for different ways to fund the people who are really interested and can contribute the time to do that. So the vision here is that the MathML core collective will persist over time rather than sort of doing the initial implementation and then saying, all right, browser companies, we got you started. Good luck. Keep it up to date. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I mean, MathML core, the collective, like you said, you know, it it mostly got kickstarted by a couple of very generous individual contributions. Um, But it is the sort of thing that, you know, I could just to pick one example, I could see Wikipedia making a case for, um, you know, Wikipedia has millions of MathML uh, elements. Right. And yeah, million, you know, I'm sure millions of pages that have mathematical expressions and most of them are images that I've seen. Well, they're generated from MathML. If you actually view through the source, everything is expressed in MathML and they have to generate some kind of image or SVG or something using MathJax or some other tool. Yeah, right. And so I could see, you know, making a case to Wikipedia to say, hey, could you could you donate to this? And, you know, and then the like the accessibility of your mathematical equations will be will be much improved, um, and the the support for that sort of thing. But you know, not just them. I'm sure there are educational you know, online educational Absolutely. companies that could, uh, could kick in on this. Um, you know, it'd be a lot easier to handle teaching math to 12th graders online or whatever, you know, calculus, that sort of thing. So yeah, Absolutely. that's so that, I mean, and again, of course, individual, like you say, individuals are always welcome to contribute. If someone says, I love math so much, I'm going to kick in 50 bucks a month. You know? I think there's a very different proposition here, too, in that uh, I don't think it is unreasonable to expect that um, browser vendors may choose to contribute monetarily as, to this as well. Yeah. It's a very different proposition to say, um, dear Google or Mozilla or Apple, you must care about this enough to be the exclusive sponsor for life. <laughs> right. Versus isn't this worth twenty thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year or ten thousand something like right uh something yeah so i can i can easily imagine uh browser vendors contributing something here (laughs) yeah that's interesting because basically what you're saying is maybe google would like to contribute money to pay somebody to add to google chrome Sure. As opposed, you know, and, you know, I would think a lot of people would think, well, why don't they just hire, they could hire an engineer, but there are sometimes reasons why that doesn't work. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, they, it's not different with the documentation of the web, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Google can hire people to write documentation mm-hmm. uh, and yet they give money to Open Web Docs. They're right. one of the primary sponsors. And there are reasons for that that make sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think this is I think this is not different. Um, I think it's a good message that the browser vendors are generally uh down with that um, you know, what it's not great for them to be the primary <laughs> owner for life and only sponsor of everything and then have everybody be constantly mad at you because you can't give enough either, right? Right. So uh, I think encouraging a system that is uh, more well spread out, that includes them 
on things that, but did not exclusively is potentially, I can imagine being appealing. Like I will, we'll know when we see that happen, but, uh, right. Yeah. So, I mean, math ML core collective, it's, uh, it's open, it's ready for donations and, um, ideally it will, uh, start having implementations happening. So, so let's talk a little bit about how it will work. Okay. Um, so there is a roadmap of work that is approved by the existing, you know, on launch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Egalia is already working on that. Um, in fact, we're well into it. We're a little bit behind on announcing this. <laughs> the The funds in there are more or less uh, spoken for. Uh, but then the uh, steering committee that we have named, which includes uh, someone from Egalia and the two original founders here who gave the uh, significant amount of money mm-hmm. and uh, someone from open collective can approve the priority plan. Okay. And uh, once that's approved, if anybody wanted to submit that they and not a Gallia would like to contribute work mm-hmm. uh, and provide an estimate of like what they think they would like to put toward that or uh, a limit at least, mm-hmm. then that can be approved. And they can go to work as well as Galia. So the idea here is not exclusively to fund Galia's work. Uh, it will act as more or less a gate on Galia's work because Galia is committed to this with actual resource investment ourselves, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of whether anybody puts in any money or not. Right. But obviously, if we have funding, it, it's easier to throw more resource at it. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is actually why this number is not a lot bigger, because if we included Egalia's investment, uh, Egalia has invested quite a bit in MathML over the last two years. Mm-hmm. Um, well, including being a, at least one Egalian was a, was a primary author of MathML core specification. That's right, Fred Wang. And also we had uh, two engineers, uh, at, well, three over different times, working on implementation in Chromium. Okay. We had multiple people on the group that was in charge of MathML Core mm-hmm. and all of its liaisoning with uh, CSS Working Group and accessibility. And uh, so, yeah, we have an enormous amount of uh, investment from the Egalia side on this. We'll continue to invest in that. Mm-hmm. But as you say, you know, a, a mathematically inclined, you know, coder or uh, consultancy could come in and say, Hey, we, you know, we want to take on this part of implementing this part of MathML core, you know, we'll work with everyone else who's doing the implementation. We think it will take, I don't know, $15,000 of, of, uh, engineer time over yeah. the next nine months. Um, and the collective steering committee can say, cool, you're, you're make it. So right. Make it. So, or, you know, can look at it and say, you know, your proposal seems way, you know, not not feasible. Can you resubmit the, you know, your proposal or whatever? Like, the, that's the sort of thing that that steering committee can do. Yeah. Yeah. The steering committee can also lay out a roadmap of what they think the priorities are. Okay. Uh, I expect that they will do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that then, uh, once that's done, people can suggest that they would like to take some part of that Mm. okay Um, yeah so the the things examples of that are for example updates that need to be made in uh firefox or in webkit and so if you Mm. thought Mm -hmm. that something about i don't know font rendering in one of those should be is a really important Mm -hmm. and it's a thing that you could tackle and it's on the priority list then you know this is an idea for you to maybe get paid to do it. I hear all this like, this is really cool, but I can't directly contribute to this. But like you say, you know, I could start pinging on Twitter, um, you know, sending out, hey, check this out. You know, anyone who follows me who's mathematically inclined, spread the word because, you know, the more companies that support this, the more uh, resources there are to get this work done faster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, I yeah. I mean, I'm going to I can already think of at least a couple of people that I would that I would probably ping directly. 
or will be pinging directly. Sure. I'm looking at you, Seamus. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, so what else should people know about this? It's not about saying browser vendors should spend less or that they pay too much. In fact, I would love it if they would all spend more. Yeah, right. uh, this is actually for us. This is for the larger ecosystem. And I think that's like important to keep in mind that having an ecosystem that is more broadly prioritized and funded actually really benefits us all. It builds a more resilient system and it gets us more kinds of things. We have plenty of examples of this. Um, just recently in WebKit, a whole bunch of interesting work got done that was not getting done. Uh, it was hard to prioritize for Apple, uh, but we did it because we're the maintainers of WPE, which is the WebKit port for embedded systems where we have like much more severe constraints. And so for our devices, this was critically important, but we did it and actually all of the WebKit ports gain from that in the end. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's the important thing to keep in mind here is that uh, while it strikes you as per perhaps a little <laughs> uh, unusual or even wrong at some level that like, because we have spent a long time saying, you know, browser vendors should spend more. Yeah. Um, this is not necessarily in conflict with that in, in spirit. It just also admits that there is a lot to be gained if we take a look at what makes for a really healthy ecosystem. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks, Brian. All right. Thanks, Eric.